Uh, welcome, everyone. And um, this is the Global Digital Library Informational Webinar for USAID mission personnel. Uh, we're very delighted to have everyone from the missions that's on the call today. Um, I just wanted to briefly introduce uh, everyone, um, and particularly uh, on behalf of the reading team, welcome you, the reading team of, of uh, USAID. So um, I am the senior advisor for the Global Book Alliance. My name is Linda Hebert. We also have uh, Krista Anderson, Gunderson, uh, who is the chief technical officer for the Global Digital Library and chief executive officer of the Norwegian Digital Learning Arena. Liv Martin uh, Norhag is also the head of NORAD's Digital Empowerment Project as well as she manages the EDUAP for Syria Innovation Competition and the Global Digital Library. And we have uh, Astrid, sorry, Limo, <laughs> sorry for uh, not saying your name correctly, uh, from URC. Uh, he is the Training and Curriculum Development Specialist at URC REACH and responsible for managing enabling writers programs in six countries and provides technical support via distance coaching. For the Global Digital Library, Limo liaises with the GDL on material submissions and metadata, and he provides technical support on quality assurance for GDL materials. So we welcome all of our um, presenters this morning. I'm going to give you uh, a bit of an overview of what the GBA, the Global Book Alliance, is. Um, which is a, an umbrella to what uh, the Global Digital Library is also doing. The Global Digital Library is uh, uh, an organization that is intended to provide um, overview to the issue around uh, providing books to children globally. Um, as you can see here in this picture, uh, we have children that are in a school, they're uh, really dressed up, they have their uniforms on, but if you look behind them, that bookshelf is empty. Um, we know that 56% uh, of children globally are not going to meet the minimum proficiency level standards in uh, reading and math by the time they should be completing primary education. Um, Two thirds of those children aren't learning uh, that aren't learning are actually in school. And so one of the key reasons for this is the lack of reading materials and books. In order to learn, we know that reading and experiencing the joy of reading, children need quality materials and books, proper instruction, as well as practice and the support of their families and communities. They need this both in the classroom and they need it at home. Governments, donors, and schools and communities often face challenges in providing all the children with access to books and learning materials in a cost-effective manner. In many cases, the books just don't exist in the languages that children uh, use and understand. The Global uh, Book Alliance is actually an alliance of about 12 members. Uh, this is the steering committee of the, of the alliance. We have a larger group that is associated with the alliance that has been very supportive in terms of providing technical support and assistance to the alliance as we build out our capacity. The, um, it's a, the, as I said, the Global Book Alliance is being temporarily housed by uh, USAID in terms of day-to-day -day management and operations. But it is a broader partnership of actors working in this sector globally, and it includes bilateral development agencies like USAID, as well as multilaterals, government, uh, government donors, and others. The partnership includes even a much broader array of actors, as I mentioned. Um, the Alliance seeks to revolutionize how the global and local communities approach the challenge of illiteracy, particularly for early grade learners. So what is our approach to really uh, address this problem? We have learned some lessons from the uh, global health uh, community uh, in the health field around how to address the 
supply chain problems that exist both in the health industry as well as agriculture and others. And we have learned that governments, donors, and partners have come together to find ways to address one of the underlying root causes of illiteracy, and that's the lack of access to quality books and reading materials. The problems related to book provision are many, and business as usual is not going to result in uh, really sustaining cha uh, challenges and finding solutions to this particular problem. This is essentially an economic problem, uh, and it is, we are going to have to find some economic uh, models and solutions that involve both the government, uh, public sector, uh, private sector, as well as donors. In order to get more books in the hands of children and teachers, the Alliance is looking at the whole supply chain. As you can see here, we're talking about the availability, title development, procurement, supply chain, distribution, and use. So we're looking across the entire uh, book chain for some solutions to, these, to this problem. In order for us to address that, uh, we have started uh, to do some key initiatives around this. First is the, uh, the launch of the Global Digital Library, uh, which Krista will be and uh, Lima will be talking about in a few minutes. Um, we also are uh, advancing work around the publishing industry and uh, working on the establishment of publishing collaboratives. Um, we also are going to start the, the Global Book Campaign. Uh, this is being developed uh, right now to also address the, the lack of books and particularly looking at the um, social behavior change uh, and uh, the culture of reading at community level. And then finally, we're also uh, getting ready to provide some funding towards pilot countries that will address the specific supply chain issues within those countries and uh, look at the uh, synergy and collaboration that we can um, address the specific problems around the book chain um, approach. Um, so I'm going to turn this now over to Krister and he's going to give us uh, the the Global Digital Library overview. Thank you. And as Linda has mentioned, uh, the, um, the Global Digital Library is, is, is a part of the Global Book Lines. Um, as as I, I assume that everyone on this call or in this, in this webinar already knows the background and the need for, for, for early grade reading materials, I've just skipped the, the question of why we're doing this. Uh, and go. Um, I've gone directly to to actually talk about what we are trying to achieve. Um, and our goal is to increase the availability of high quality learning resources um, in underserved languages. And we're we're targeting early grade reading um, as a specific area in this um, um, in this project. And what we're actually doing is is fairly fairly. Practical. We're collecting resources, one of the main reasons for this call, uh, and we're collecting high quality resources uh, and we're making them available on web, mobile, and for print. Um, and those three uh, last elements here, they're truly important because um, to be able to do that on our platform, really be what we call platform agnostic, um, we have to think really, really. Uh, through how we recreate the, the content. So what we're doing, we're, we're actually gathering content from different sources and um, we, we decouple them and then we uh, reassemble them and we make them available on web, mobile, and for print. And when I say mobile, uh, um, I mean mobile uh, as an app for Android, which, is, um, uh, which means, for instance, that you won't be able to download the app on, a, on an iPhone, but you will be able to access the web uh, on an iPhone. Uh, and print, of course, as you may, uh, uh, many of you are already familiar with, with uh, would, be, would be one of the, the, the sort of ways to reach a, a user. Um, uh, but as we are experienced so far is that print is the, has been so far the primary 
a channel. What sets us a bit apart from, from, from other uh, projects uh, out there is that we've been very focused on quality assurance. Um, so when we gather content from um, any resource, uh, whether it's African Storybook, from Bookdash, two of our, our sources, or from enabling writers, um, we do quality assurance on top of the quality assurance that uh, has already uh, already been 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 worked on on uh, onto the or into the project. Um, and as a minimum, we 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 quality check all our our content one more time uh, as it is um, imported into uh, to our platform. Uh, in practice, this means that even though African Storybook has more than 4,000 resources available, we are only importing approximately 10% of these. And even when we do that 10%, we do quality uh, enhancements on the way, uh, on the way. Um, uh, and we have a, a, a very, very um, um, distinct uh, set of quality assurance uh, standards that I'll also uh, show you um, uh, as I demo, demo the platform. Uh, accessibility has been a very important part of our, our project um, from, from the very beginning. Um, and the result is that many of the resources that you see um, are, are more accessible when we present them than when we got them in. And the platform itself is nearly triple A uh, VCAG um, compliant, uh, which means we're at the top, top 2%, 2-3% two, of, um, of accessibility ratings uh, amongst uh, projects that we can 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 compare ourselves to. Um, we've also had user testing with with user subjects that are themselves uh, visually impaired. So we have also gone beyond that requirement. Also in terms of designing a solution that is really um, accessible um, for for test subjects that are 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 in need of a of a, a solution that is truly accessible. Um, so this has been 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 uh, really important for us and. As we see that some of the content has the has some problems um, when we take it in, we're also now developing our platform to be able to to work with partners to actually increase the quality of the accessibility uh, of the content while it is on the platform. So, for instance, when we get pictures from a, um, a service like African Storybook, we will add uh, um, information to them uh, so that they are more accessible than our, on our platform than they were uh, on the original uh, platform. Um, a really important part for us, uh, as we are developing this um, platform in, in, in Oslo, in fact, it is really important for us to emphasize that it's a, it's a, it's a truly user-driven um, process where we have tested towards users before we started developing, during development, and after development. And we have, uh, until now, had six rounds of user testing was spread on three different countries, um, Cambodia, Ethiopia, and Nepal. And we'll add um, Kenya and Bangladesh to that list uh, in just over a month. And what we do is actually have users test um, uh, what we had developed and then change it based on that, on that feedback. And everything you see in terms of navigation and how the platform lets you find resources now I'll demo that afterwards, has been changed after these, these test rounds. So it's not only to get out there and get confirmation that what we've done is, is correct, we've actually made substantial changes to that, uh, to that um, platform. So the platform is not developed and tested in Oslo, and Norway it is, is tested where the, the users um, are. One really important aspect is Creative Commons. So Creative Commons is, um, a free license for content that allows users to download the resources, print them, use them in um, any context they, they, they would like. Um, and most of our licenses also even allow commercial use. So I'll get back to that when I, when I demo the platform, but when you download the resource, over 95% of our resources allows any teacher any parent or any child to download and read it for free, but it, they will also allow a publisher to download it, translate it, and then sell it in the market with, with no, no strings attached to the original author at all. Um, and, and this is also going to be my, one of my points when I, when I go through the list of, of to-dos uh, when you um, 
at one point want to um, uh, contribute with content, uh, having this license follow the content when it's published is, is, is really important. But the whole sharing dynamic around the platform is based on uh, this portfolio of licenses. And they're actually global. So we're not the only one using these. Um, this is a global set of, of, of licenses that allows for sharing. Uh, so in addition to taking in uh, resources and then uh, spreading them on, on three different platforms or, or in, in three different ways, we also on our platform facilitate translation into 300 language. This is not machine translation, this is human translation. So any teacher, any parent can go into the platform and instead of just downloading the book, they can, or read it, they can take a book and translate it from English uh, into their own language. Um, and then use it themselves. No book will, of course, be republished on the platform without quality assurance, but for your personal use or for, for, for printing and selling, anyone can, um, can translate the book on our platform and then, and then use it in their own context. Um, and this is, of course, for the smaller languages or for langu uh, languages with no content at all, this is um, 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 a tremendous uh, opportunity. And for those of you who are familiar with Khan Academy, we are using the same translation platform um, as Khan Academy um, uh, has been using for, for a long time. Um, this platform also uh, um, uh, facilitates uh, quality assurance of translations. If we get to that point where a group has translated, we can, we can set some trusted parties to go through uh, translations and then quality assure them um, um, as, a, as, a, as part of the measure to get it back on the platform. The platform is designed mobile first, so it will work on desktop, it will work for print, uh, it will work on, on, on any device uh, of any size, but it is first and foremost designed uh, for consumption on web, uh, for mobile, or for print. Those are the two, two, two main. The main reason for this is because uh, mobile is, is, a, is a truly important part of, of any user in the target uh, areas that we're looking for now. Uh, I just want to emphasize this part with print. These two are not sort of uh, at the opposite end of a solution. Uh, they're very complementary. So, so, or I don't know if you, they're, I can say more easily, they're, they're, they're really, really um, good together. So you can both uh, be, be a user of a mobile telephone and be there. If you want to scale it up and, and take it into a classroom as a teacher, and your, 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 your students don't have any mobile telephones, you can just print it, uh, the same book, and use it in a, in a, in a printed setting. So these are not in, uh, the opposites. They're, they're, they're very, very uh, well suited on our platform uh, together. Um, I just want to add, uh, add that I just picked up some numbers from, from I think this post was from the World Bank, as a number right now of, of uh, mobile subscriptions uh, across Africa. And that number is growing. Uh, uh, rapidly, of course. So, um, so both print and, and of course, web uh, based on mobile. Um, I'm going to uh, go back and go back to the web and demo the platform. Uh, a front page of a website called the Global Digital Library right now, uh, with a beta at the end. Um, and the platform is fairly simple. It's really, really um, designed for any users to be able to pick up this, this, this link and get started with reading in their language within a few clicks. So what you see here is, is, is the first page you will come into. And our primary navigation, um, based on user feedback, is finding your language. And right now, we have 15 languages in our list. I have uh, chosen English at first, but I can go to any one of these uh, languages. Um, and you can see that we have Tigrinya, uh, we have uh, Peri, we have Hausa, of course, uh, Afana, Afana Romo. And seven of these African languages are um, based on um, uh, USAID projects in, or USAID funded projects in Ethiopia. Uh, and I'll get back to those uh, resources in a bit. But before I go into any of the other um, languages, I will show you how to navigate. And I'll stick to English. As this is the only language I know currently. Um, after you've chosen your language, there are two content types we operate with, uh, library books and classroom books. 
And if a language has both, they will come up side by side. I'll demo that afterwards. In a language like English, where we only have library books, uh, they will present only one. And the difference is, is fairly uh, self-explanatory. Uh, um, library books are books that you just read um, without any, any connection to any school or, or classroom, uh, while classroom books are government approved uh, and they are, um, as you will see afterwards, they also have, the, of course, levels of decodable, and they're much uh, more focused on on actually learning how to uh, to uh, to read at the the, the proper steps and levels. Um, when I found my language and I found my my type of book or category of book, I navigate by level, and on on uh, on library books, it's level one to four. Uh, and these are actually based on levels uh, out of two projects. Um, Pr uh, Pratham Books uh, Story Weaver uh, from India and African Storybook. And we have sort of made four levels based on, on the levels in these two projects. In addition to level one to four, we have what's called read alouds. And these are mostly books that either are meant to read, being, being read aloud, or they're not leveled. Um, so uh, as you can see down here, these with the, the beautiful drawings, these are from a project called Book Dash in South Africa. And these are, um, are defined as read alouds mostly because they are not leveled uh, from the, uh, the provider. So uh, you choose your language, you find your category, and then you, you, you toggle by level. And level one is the most simple one. Uh, and level four, uh, longer text and, and more complex stories. Um, if I go into, let's say I go into level one, I can get more overview of that if I think my, my child is, is suitable for that category. And you will see that some of them have a very uh, typical African feel to them. Some of them have um, a more Indian feel. Uh, one of the most translated books uh, and this domain is called Fat King Thin Dog. It is actually from from the Indian project I mentioned. Um, Happy and Sad is a book from from uh, African Storybook, um, and um, um, the other one as, uh, I mentioned is 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 Book Dash. You will see that no books here are from Book Dash because they're not leveled. Um, so this is one way to come f uh, come. Uh, step by step towards a book, and you should be able to start reading um, um, only by clicking twice if you have chosen your your um, your right language. And you should be at this point um, starting to read uh, a book. Before I start reading a book and showing you how, you how that works, I will just uh, go back and do a search because that is the, the second mo um, way of. Of, of, uh, of actually finding a book. So if I've chosen my language, I can go to search. I can go for, for instance, cat. And then I will get the feedback on cat, either in the title or description, or I, and then I can choose the book. Uh, and in both cases, I come to the place where I get some sort of short overview of the, of the book itself. Uh, in this case here, I can do many things. I could normally start reading. Um, or I could download the book. If I download the book, I can either download an ebook, it can be read entirely on my phone offline, or I can download a printable version of the book. Uh, the printable version can also be read on my, on my phone or on my computer, um, but it's, it's primarily downloaded for print. If I download the ebook on a computer, uh, I would usually have an application natively that would just open it and I can start reading on, on the computer. The same goes for mobile telephone. So this is actually one way to go offline entirely with, with some books, uh, also from our, our website. Um, if I start reading, it's most common, uh, we, we see this from our user analysts, um, uh, analytics, uh, it's the most common way to go. You come to the book and then you start reading the book uh, directly. Um, and this is, uh, more or less like like toggling through a normal book. Uh, you go page by page um, until you are until you are finished. And these books have been repurposed so that they're 
both readable on a computer, a tablet, and a mobile telephone, of course. Um, and and the navigation is actually something that you should be able to do on on all these. And 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 again, while while doing this talk, I navigate with my my buttons and not my mouse. Uh, and and um, going um, uh, accessible for all. Uh, and this read, uh, read experience is, of course, also been tested by, by our test subjects that are, are requiring uh, an accessible uh, formatted uh, platform. Um, if I close the book, I get back to the, to the page I am on. Um, and here uh, you can see that the licenses, is, uh, they're mentioned for each book. And the reasons for them being so prominently placed is, is actually because they, they, are, they are truly important in terms of what kind of reuse you can do. And in some very, very rare cases, you will see an NC at the end uh, of this, this, um, this um, sort of uh, setup of licenses at the end. And that means non-commercial. Those are very rare, but that would mean that the book cannot be 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 reprinted and, and and sold. But for more than ninety five percent, you can actually here download this book, a comeback cat, and then sell it in any way you want, without even talking to the author. Um, and if you want to translate it first into your language, you are free to do so on our platform. And that bridge to translation brings me to the the the, the midfield of the of the of the screen here where you actually can go in and translate a book yourself. If you, if you feel you, you have uh, 40 minutes and you wanna, you wanna create a book um, uh, on your own terms. Usually for the books that you can see in the screen now, for instance, Amounts for a House, uh, they are very um, um, picture heavy and short on text because they're targeting a, an early grade reading level. So, so translating a book, if you're competent in language, um, the language you're trying to translate to would take somewhere between 30 and 50 minutes uh, at the most. So it's a fairly doable process. Um, we had a translation event in Cambodia uh, in January to test this, and we did over 40 books within two days using 25 students and, and some literacy experts to quality assure. So it's really a model that scales if you find books that are contextualized correctly or good enough for your, your use. Um, we, of course, understand that some of the books are, are really contextualized, uh, targeted to one um, culture, uh, and are not um, sort of uh, reusable for all uh, cultures. But this book, for instance, uh, would, would mostly work uh, within, in, in many, many contexts. Um, so that is, that is the, um, that is the, the platform in a, in a short demo, I'm just going to show you how, um, how uh, Amharic looks, because Amharic is one of the languages where we have both library books and classroom books. So these are library books from um, African Storybook, primarily. And these, if I have the web with me, these are classroom books from a USAID funded projects in collaboration with Save the Children in Ethiopia. Um, and these books are actually mainly what we're, what we're looking to get from uh, uh, as many of the missions as we can or mission funded projects. We're actually looking to get books from, uh, from USAID funded projects that we could then put in here and present um, in a reusable manner. In this case, anyone can go in, uh, and they can download the book, uh, either printed or user in a, in a classroom uh, of their own. Um, and a funny story about this collection of, of resources, we have approximately 520 titles in seven languages, um, is that the language or the content was produced of very high quality. Uh, that it was licensed correctly under a, a Creative Commons license, which means you can reuse it as you please. But the files were, were only meant in, initially for print, of natural reasons, uh, and we actually can take them from a drawer in, in Addis Ababa and and uh, republish them on on the web. Um, uh, a bit of a disclaimer: you can see that there is only a download button here, and one of the of the issues that I'm going to come back to in just a second 
is that the, the even though the books are really of a high quality, the, written, the visual design is is really really nice. Um, the format of the books here was only in PDF, which meant it was impossible for us to really repurpose it for for mobile use. Um, and I have presented this as a, as a last point because uh, my next point on the agenda is actually going through some of the the um, how-to elements of 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 importing content. So that is what I'm going to do now. I'm trying to transcend into another slide here. And based on our, our, our goal to, to be able to gather as much content as we can uh, from uh, USAID funded missions um, or USAID uh, funded projects, um, we have set some content uh, guidelines for the GDL. Um, and to start with, um, as I mentioned earlier, being able to reuse these resources um, properly, we need to have a very clear picture of who owns the rights to the content. Uh, in Ethiopia, that resulted in us being able to publish 520 titles, but approximately just as many. So about 600 resources we were unable to publish because the rights to the content was was not um, uh, resting uh, with with USAID, and the license was a copyrighted license. Um, while we would only like to import in this phase the license that is Creative Commons. So as as a, as a beginning, uh, if your project are are are, are looking to to get uh, resources um, imported into the GL, be sure that you either own the the rights yourself or that you have based your content on already freely licensed content. The first one is the most relevant for you. Usually you, you have to secure that you own, own the rights. The second one is, um, for us, is really important. Be sure that the content is developed accessible for all. And we have uh, links to some guidelines on, on all these points, uh, especially this one, uh, that will give you some pointers and we can also um, if we get to the point where we import, actually get uh, get feedback to each each project. The most common problem here is that because we have simple content with pictures and text, uh, the most common problem is that we have uh, pictures in resources that has not been labeled correctly, um, uh, and that that goes for nearly all the content that we get. So we can we can be fairly helpful in terms of getting you some some pointers on on. This one is really important. Uh, we see that some of the USAID projects that we've uh, have gotten some sample content from um, um, up until now, for instance, from the Philippines, um, they have good content funded by by um, by uh, uh, with USAID funds, but they are um, uh, and and they're supposed to be shared freely, but they are actually under a copyright license. So in this case here. Uh, ours is to use Creative Commons or other free licenses. This will really, really help uh, both for teachers and parents to avoid the, the situation of them doing something wrong or breaking the law, but also for publishers that uh, would like to repurpose the content and reuse it uh, for commercial uh, use. Um, so releasing the content under free licenses is something that we find is really, really important. Um, and now we're getting fairly technical. So if you don't understand, if you guys don't, uh, every one of you don't understand this, we, we have, we have uh, again, some guidelines that we can, can share afterwards. Uh, and my advice here is at this point to start talking to some of the technical staff uh, in your projects. But we have two formats, as it's called, that we, that we are um, looking to get the content on. Uh, the first one is EPUB. It's really an ebook. It can be read entirely on, on, on any device. Um, uh, mostly, and the other one is HTML, and the web itself is based on HTML. So these formats are not some specific formats for for um, for G the GDL, but it's truly important that this uh, these are the formats. And the reason for not pointing out to PDF here is because PDF, um, uh, and most of you are probably producing your content at this point in PDF. PDF is made not to be changed. The whole purpose of creating a PDF is is for, for it to stay exactly how it is, while we want to reuse, repurpose, and be platform agnostic. 
Um, and we can, of course, will also produce PDFs, but as an end product, not as a core product or a core format. Um, but again, I, I, I truly appreciate that this can be very technical, but, but at this point here, um, we see that most of the projects that we've gotten content from uh, until now are, are um, they're able to do it, but they're primarily focusing on print and therefore initially just doing PDF. Uh, we have a set of quality assurance standards. Uh, we'll be sure that you guys get a link to that after this webinar. Um, uh, and we have one set for classroom materials and we have one set for library uh, materials. And uh, we would like, as a minimum, even though there has been very good quality assurance in a project, and that mostly it is when, when it's, it's, it's classroom books, we, we would like the content to be checked against uh, these, these criteria. Um, these are not long documents. It's fairly um, uh, straightforward to, to understand what kind of quality assurance uh, elements we're looking for, um, but, but to be sure that everyone has the same a set of criteria we have defined those separately for library books and for uh, classroom books. Um, <laughs> and again, here we're, we're on to a, a bit of a technical uh, um, uh, element, but metadata is another word for just information about the books. So we would like to have title, of course, we would like to have the publisher's name, we would like to have a description of the book, and these are called metadata. And we have actually some, some examples of how you can do this. But for each book we, we, we get in, we would like to have um, proper metadata so that we can publish them in a, in a correct and uniform uh, manner um, on, our, on our platform. Uh, and in this case, we've also based ourselves on, a, on an international standard called uh, LRMI. So, so um, most publishers, if you're working with them, uh, should have that standard um, as it is fairly, fairly basic. And we're looking for eight, eight um, um, uh, metadata elements that we need, but the whole spectrum that we're, we're providing, the possibility of providing is 26. So, uh, but no one has actually given us metadata with 26 uh, entities on. Uh, most, uh, mostly they're just aiming for those that are, that we need to have to be able to publish. So, but this is basically just information on each book that we, we or resource that we actually need to, to be able to publish. As, as a final, um, element because this can be can feel fairly overwhelming we have created a, a process description of how you can if you have content that you feel would be suitable for the gl we have a process that we have defined uh, and we can also guide you through this um, country, uh, country by country project by project but I'm, I'm just going to show you some of the, of the elements so first of all um, we usually get uh, of course the content in pdf or html and we get a spreadsheet normally with the metadata. And then we import it into our platform and let the, the original provider look at the content as it would be uh, um, displayed on our platform. So that you can actually see that our import has been successful. Uh, give us pointers on how it's actually looking on our platform. This is again to be, be, be really thorough on the quality assurance side. Um, so if you guys, uh, any of your projects would provide content, you will be able to see it on our platform before we go public with it. We call this staging a digital library. After uh, approving content on our test platform, um, we do a final check uh, based on the quality assurance standard that I just mentioned, uh, um, title by title, and then the organization that we choose uh, to be responsible for, uh, for the QA would actually sign an online form um, uh, that says the, the, the content is compliant with, with the standards. And then after this, uh, and only after this, the content will be imported to the platform and published on the GDL for public use. Um, and after that, we'll even then do another quality assurance run with uh, our, our collaborating partner to be sure that what is actually live uh, holds the same quality as the one uh, we, we checked on on staging. So as you can see here, the steps are, are fairly focused on keeping quality as, as, as an important part uh, all through the, 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 the process. I'm just gonna end with showing you some examples. This is a batch of Bangla resources from, from um, one of our partners. 
it's marked yes for each of the titles based on each on the quality assurance elements. Um, and the sheet like this, you would be able to get from us upfront uh, so that you can actually um, uh, fill in uh, based on a, on a set of, of, of elements. This is the form that you would fill out uh, saying, uh, checking off uh, elements for, for, um, for quality. Uh, this is actually a Google form, um, and and to be able to to in 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 the rearview mirror, uh, so be able to to actually see what kind of batches has been uh, approved uh, towards our our quality assurance standards. Again, doing this process properly has been has been a very very important uh, uh, focus for us. If you want more information about the project, um, you can go to home digital library .io and um, if you want to go to the site itself, it is only digitallibrary.io. And if you guys now want to try to start looking at the service on your phones, for instance, you can do that, uh, even though I'm looking at the same URL uh, for, uh, for, for web. So you will find the same platform, the same navigation on, on mobile phones. So, Linda, I think that is my, my talk. Okay, thank you so much, Krista. That was very, very helpful, uh, very thorough. Um, we are now going to transition to Limo, uh, who's going to give us some uh, specific information around how USAID missions can actually uh, engage with this. Linda, nice presentation. And me, I will take the, 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 the section where it addresses, it highlights the role of REACH in sourcing the materials from USAID missions. And uh, let me start by saying that uh, REACH is a USAID funded five year initiative to build a community of practice, a professional network focused on improving reading outcomes in the primary grades. A major initiative under REACH is to trial, refine, and promote innovations. A major initiative under REACH is to trial, refine, and promote innovations to the global reading community, and one of which is the global digital library. So the, the, the overall responsibility of REACH in sourcing uh, materials for GDL is to ensure that materials uploaded to the GDL are of high quality and they align with the GDL minimum standards. Uh, in this regard, REACH is establishing a community of sport reviewers of decodable and leveled books who will be responsible for assessing quality of materials submitted for the uh, Specific responsibilities include that uh, REACH will serve as a point of contact to USA missions for leveled and decodable books for GDL so that we guide them the missions on the submission uh, of the materials and in creating metadata spreadsheet, uh, coordinate the upcoming survey to assess missions readiness to contribute to the availability of the target material and provide confirmation to the GDL regarding the quality of source materials. In addition, REACH will coordinate pilot support review process with a sample of missions books. As you can see on the screen, we are targeting uh, books from 41 missions, including missions from Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, Northern Africa and Middle East. And uh, with these 41 missions, we are targeting materials in over 100 local languages. We are assuming that uh, mission, ma missions materials are of high quality. Uh, however, we'll be asking verification from the missions and IPs on the quality assurance which each mission's material went through during their development to see the alignment with GDL quality assurance standards. Uh, GDL quality assurance standards for the GDL classroom books have been developed to a large extent based on how USAID missions do quality assurance for elegant reading materials. And therefore, verification on the missions quality assurance in most cases is verifying to the GDL standards. In addition, while the materials are online, as Krista mentioned, a sample of the missions materials 
will be exposed to sport review as a pilot for sport review process established for sport checking quality of decodable and leveled books submitted for GDL. This pilot will inform more the GDL quality assurance standards and the sport review uh, process for the next batch of books submitted for the GDL platform. Uh, USA's Office of Education has asked the URC to undertake a survey to assess, to assess format and availability of reading materials, in this case, decodable and leveled books that have been developed with USAID funding globally. The purpose of this survey is to assess the current and expected ability of USAID missions to contribute uh, content to the global digital library. This survey will be administered in the first week of June, and we kindly request every mission to complete the survey questionnaire, uh, which will be sent to them after this mission, after this webinar. And uh, basic information like date of project completion and submission by IPs to USAID or to the mission, a language of materials, number of titles available, in this case, decodable and leveled, whether materials are decodable and leveled or, or leveled books, whether materials went through a quality assurance check, and it will also establish format of materials, whether materials are in EPUB, in design, or PDF format. But our interest is EPUBs, and also we will be happy to, to get in designs. We'll also establish whether these materials, the type of license of these materials, whether they are open license or they are cooperated to government or to any entity which participated in, in their development, and also whether the materials have government uh, approval. So there, down here is the link, but we will share with you uh, after this webinar so that you can start completing the, the survey. And this survey will help us a lot in prioritizing which materials are we going to start with uh, to import to the GDL platform. We have timelines here, and uh, our goal is to be able to receive submissions from all the projects by September this year. Uh, but we, 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 we do need to be sure that the appropriate format and metadata are ready to, the, to, to facilitate upload to the GDL. And uh, we, we have persons to contact at URC Reach, and uh, the point of contact, therefore, at the mission will be expected to lie with the, the URC Reach team in planning and implementing relevant follow-up actions so that they share available materials with the DDL and ensure readiness of future materials. At REACH, we have Samara, who is a project coordinator. Uh, Samara will be confirming with the, you with the missions on the submission of completed survey questionnaire. And she will also be organizing, uh, organized for submission of materials and metadata, schedule pilot for book reviews, coordinate spot reviews. And another person is me, Limo, and uh, I'll be available for questions regarding the GDL and the survey. Also, uh, I, I like see with GDL on material submission and metadata. So any question related to material submission and metadata, I can also assist. But also refine the book review process. As we said, we are going to establish a spot review uh, of materials we'll be importing for GDL, and therefore it will be informing what we can change, what we can modify in our um, quality uh, assurance standards, or what we should guide missions more so that we get the, the most appropriate format we would like for the GDL. So with that brief uh, presentation, I thank you so much for joining this webinar and thank you for listening. Thank you, Limo, that was excellent. Um, thanks so much. Uh, we're now going to turn to Liv um, to give just a brief um, discussant uh, review of what we've heard and then 
uh, I know that we are very much uh, at the hour right now, so just a very brief uh, comment from Liv, and then we'll we'll close. If you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to get in contact with any of those that are on uh, the panelist list. Uh, we're more than happy to to answer any questions. So, Liv, over to you for a final word. Yeah, so, so thank you so much, Linda. Uh, so this is Lynn Nordhoff from the Norwegian Agency for Development Corporation, NORDA. Um, I just wanted to say that, uh, that uh, we're thrilled to be part of this, and, and I really just want to stress that what we've heard through uh, this webinar from the presentation by Linda about the Global Book Alliance, and then the more technical uh, presentation by Christer about how the Global Digital Library is, is a part of that Global Book Alliance value chain. Uh, and then from Limo on, on sort of how uh, content can be um, can be submitted to the Global Digital Library. I just want to stress that you know the, it's a very big we in this alliance, and that the USAID missions are a fundamental part of the success of the Global Digital Library. Uh, we have really witnessed that um, from the launch in Ethiopia with USAID Ethiopia, for instance. That this is really a win-win for all parties involved. We have you know, resources of tremendous quality being imported to the Global Digital Library. But I also think that from the mission perspective, um, USA and Ethiopia can, can sort of testify that this has also been you know, a big communication boost for them. And I think they also see a great value in being able to share their materials. So I just wanted to sort of close with those words of encouragement to say that this is something that means a lot to the success of the Global Digital Library. I hope that those of you from the missions who are involved in reading resources, um, you know, will we'll follow up on this dialogue. And, and Linda, I just want to like, go back to you now. And, and I don't know if we have to end on the hour or if we can open up for a few questions. I'll leave that uh, to you to decide. We just wanted to thank everyone for participating in the call. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating. We really appreciate it. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you.